Here we are, so. But there was great excitement about the cask the other night. Yeah, it's, it seems to have gone down very, very well. Yeah. Which is great, you know. It's great to see that there's excitement around, you know, O'Shaughnessy Distilling Company and around Keeper's Heart. So yeah. it's really, you know, it's it's taken off at a, a pace for us. Yeah. And it's great to see the interest with your, with your new club and, and an interest around our cask as well. And to be honest with you, we're thrilled that... You know, you're you're having our cask as your first uh, cask in the for the club members, so it's great. Sure, we're the lucky ones like to be able to get a cask from yourself and yeah, you know, whiskey royalty like. Well, <laughs> I don't know about the whiskey royalty, but like we're you know from from my point of view, it's great to be involved in the, in in this type of as you described it as a journey. I mean, yeah. it's not a case about just having a cask and there it is, and in four years' time it gets bottled and taken away or whatever length of time. It really is about you know having people come along. See it, see it being filled if if they're able to make it. Um, as somebody did joke though that said, you know, January wouldn't be a great time to come to Minneapolis, but who no, knows? No. You know, it might be one of the warmest um, uh, Januarys in the <laughs> history. The whiskey warm them up when exactly. they get there. The yeah. potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, and then to have people coming through the distillery that are that are part of it and that are that have become part members of the of the Keepers Art Cast Society, that'll be brilliant, you know. And then as we go through and it starts aging, to actually taste the whiskey and get samples for tasting, brilliant. but also. I, I th I've mentioned to you before about us, you know, being strategic in our innovation and to be part of some tastings of new liquid that we bring That's out as brilliant. time goes by, you know, and get people's feedback. I think all of that will add to the whole well, excitement of course. as well. People you know? love the crack about yeah. connecting with others who love what they love and yeah. to be able to get close to you and to see what you're doing yeah. and to, to learn about great. your craft. And, and, it's, and all, it's all about enjoyment. At the yeah. end of the day, you know, the focus on, on, on our distillery is about bringing people together, having an enjoying time around whiskey and enjoying time together as friends. And that's, that's key to it. Tell me about the Keeper's Heart Cask Society and how it kind of came about and the idea of how it should be structured. Well, I think from, from our point of view, you know, what we felt was that there was there was really a, a start of, of whiskey history and whiskey change and whiskey tradition as such by, you know, me coming from Ireland and us using the Irish technique and the traditional Irish technique of triple distillation and pot stills. And then bringing it to America and doing it on, on American soil and starting off with the quintessential way, which was that traditional mash bill of malted barley and non-malted barley. And then actually Americanizing it by maturing it in virgin American oak barrels as well. And creating the cuts that create that, that will actually have a little bit more character in order so such that the, the character of the pot still still shines true as it does sit in a virgin American oak barrel because yeah, there's no doubt that having a virgin American oak barrel there's greater intensity of flavour coming from the wood in a quicker length of time yeah. as well so you want to make sure that the distillate characteristic will match that as well you know Do you have any sense of how long it's going to take for that whiskey to reach the maturity level where you want to, you're ready to bottle it. Yeah, I mean, obviously we're laying down casks as part of the, the Keeper's Heart Cask Society. And then we're also looking at, you know, releasing a, an American single pot still whiskey that will actually showcase that type of, of liquid yeah. as well. And in my mind, I'm looking at two, two and a half years of time that this whiskey will be ready to release. However, that's something that is new to us where yeah. we will be watching it. If we don't feel the quality is right at two and a half years, it won't be released. We'll actually wait until the quality is right. And you know, right. you need to do that yeah. when, you're, when you're releasing brands like this. You have to make sure that quality is paramount, not time. I know, yeah, yeah. Malted on malted barley then as well, so yeah. kind of inspired by the Irish style. Exactly, so it's a mash bill of malted and unmalted barley, and we've tried to source it from around the whole Minnesota area, so okay. we've, we've dealt with... Um, Rar malting, which are basically the the company that are supplying us with our with our grain, right. and they're they're based in Minnesota, and okay. you know they're they're actually really kind of only up the road really from us, so they'll be supplying all the grain to us as well, okay. which is good. So the raw and the malted barley will come yeah, from yeah, come from, from rare, yeah. Okay, very good, very good. And a virgin American oak wouldn't have been something that was used in any great quantities. In in the previous role you had, would it have been? Yeah, it would have been. It would have been much smaller percentages. I mean, you know, the, look. If you look at the the traditional way Irish whiskey is 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 produced, the majority of barrels that are used are refill American barrels, and obviously for good reason because of the taste profile that it gives the Irish whiskey and all of that. And I suppose from our point of view, we're we're gonna we're ratcheting up a notch a bit, looking at the wood characteristic and the wood contribution by using the Virgin American oak. But it's very important 
that the distillate stands up to that and that we can that we can have a balance of both wood and distillate contribution so it'll be very interesting to watch and we will we will over time probably use some refill barrels as well because our plan here is to is to innovate is to try something different and also go back to you know traditional style as well of the you know the quintessential way Irish whiskey was made was which was using that and using refill barrels so we'll have some of that as well available but I'm very excited about what the Virgin American yeah yeah with, That's, you know? it sounds very interesting all right and you're not in any way restricted by kind of the same rules that you had in Ireland how long you have to age it for yeah you know you've got a, have you got a little bit more flexibility there's no definition for single, mo single pot no, still in America that's the it? thing there's no definition for single pot still in America and that's something that we're we're also working on as well and we're we're looking at where you know where it fits in in, in, in the whole categories of things and you know who knows over time there might be a, a category for, yeah. for single pot still but I think you, you have some flexibility, but you also have to work within guidelines that are set down by the TTB. So, yep. you know, you, you, we, we obviously work closely with that as well. But we're also pushing the boundaries. And I think that's important in any, in any area when you're developing whiskies and you're, you're being innovative, is that you push the boundaries to, make, to, to, to produce the styles that, that you feel consumers want and consumers yeah. will like, but also look be, with a nod to what is, you know, the TTB requires yep. and stuff like that. It'd be great if we could get all the club members up to the distillery over the course of the maturation. Absolutely, visit. it would. And like you know, we we said we we had said that when we spoke the last yeah. time on 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 your show. You know, it would be great to have it have an evening up there anyway. So You'd this is adding it. another yeah, one. You know, yeah. and we'd be only we'd be thrilled. To It'll see only be there. us up there now soon, exactly, just every yeah, night doing just, something. Yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. But you you know. I mean, it's it's hard to believe the two of us are sitting here in Blarney, isn't it? Honestly, yeah, and like you're like a tourist now. Coming I thought, back to, yeah, you're you're like the, you're I'm, like I'm the, the local, local now. You're a tourist. <laughs> <laughs> but um, and it's great to get the opportunity to have this conversation in my hometown. That's it. I mean, we didn't think that was going to happen. No, my God, no, we did not. No, we here did we are. Not. Exactly. I couldn't even get you an American. Song, I don't. Like, <laughs> got you over here. Um, the, yeah, there was great excitement when we announced the cask program, uh, announced the cask, and and announced what we were doing, and and. Uh, some questions about well, why are you doing an American whiskey and you're really an Irish whiskey club? And I said, well, actually, I very specifically didn't call it an Irish whiskey club. I called it a whiskey club because I wanted to have Irish adjacent yeah. experiments, projects, distilleries that we could do things with yourselves mm -hmm. being a prime example of that. And it'd be hard to separate the Irishness from what you're doing. Like It would. And, you know, like for, 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 for me, I am appreciative of and we're, we're appreciative of the fact that, you know, to be involved in something like this and to be part of the club because you know some people could consider you know we've come to you've come to america and it's it's all all american whiskey yeah. but we actually have an irish whiskey portfolio as well so if you look at our next release we'll say from keeper's heart yep. is actually going to be a 10 year old single malt that's been finished in malaga wine cask and it's absolutely beautiful the way the malaga wine has contributed to the complexity of the whiskey and really looking forward to that being released over the next couple of weeks. And that's that's an Irish whiskey. So yeah. we really are, you know, both an Irish whiskey and an Irishized American whiskey yeah. as well. Yeah. So that's, that's I think we really the do fit into words. it. You know, I really do feel it. We, we, yeah. we kind of have our way into the, have our position in with the club. And I, I think it's great, you know. And maybe it'll be a little bit easier bottling it up, seeing as the cask is already in America, as opposed to our next cask is going to come from... Ireland yeah. and we have to get the bottles over here so bottles over. yours will be here yeah which will be which will be great you know I mean, it'll, out, be yeah. in, it'll be in America and you know it's it's not once you have all your ducks in a row it, yeah. it, it works out so we put a lot of time into you know making sure that the mechanics of the uh, of the society were together before yeah. we released it and launched it because you, it's important to do that just like the time and effort that you put into putting the club together and making sure it can all yeah, yeah. it can all run as smoothly as you can possibly expect it there's obviously going to be teething problems ah, sure, yeah. but yeah. you know you, you, you just have to make sure you have your ducks in a row exactly you know? yeah and you had some great advice on yeah. working on the cask ask and what to do and what to call exactly, what not to call it and yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. yeah and you know so we're we're quite we're very comfortable now with what we've come up with and it'll be you know as i think the best form of flattery will be if people start copying it <laughs> <laughs> they probably will they probably they will, will. They which will. is great which is well, going to be a great whole journey anyway so yeah next few years and maybe maybe january is when we we, we yeah we, we i mean we'll definitely we, we'll definitely lay it down 
um, at the latest, I'd say will probably be January. Okay. You know, so we'll keep in contact. As yeah. To when we'll figure out a day. We'll get people up there if exactly, they can. Exactly. Yeah. And we'll yeah. do it virtually. We we'll live stream it. Yeah. For and those it'll who be can't great. Get there. It'll be yeah. great, and we'll yeah. have a bit of fun as well. Because session. the most important thing about this, to me as well, is having fun along the way. Hundred percent. Because you know, I think lots of people get into whiskey and enjoy the whole mechanics and the whole kind of uh, technology around it. But at the end of the day, it's about tasting this with friends, 100%. having fun and enjoying what you do. And, you know, you look anytime you're on your show as you're having fun. And I certainly have fun doing what I do. So, you know, long may it continue. Slaunch it. Slaunch. Look forward to the journey. Cheers, Cheers. Brian. Cheers.